Hi everybody, thanks for joining me on Just Cook with Michael. Today I'm going to teach you how to make shrimp skewered with rosemary on a bed of couscous. To begin with, these are the ingredients. We have our shrimp here, some raw shrimp, there's still the shell on so I'm going to have to peel them. I'm going to marinate the shrimp with some balsamic vinegar, extra virgin olive oil, garlic, black pepper, salt, some oregano, some rosemary, and then I'm going to skewer the shrimp on these rosemary twigs. So I try to pick out pieces that are fairly hefty. Couscous is going to be garnished with some asparagus and cherry tomatoes. That is it. Simple, delicious. Let's get to it. Okay, to begin with, I'm going to chop up the herbs, some fresh parsley, some oregano, and some rosemary. I'm just going to chop them up together because they're all going to get mixed in the marinade anyway. And we'll just chop this all up together. I'm going to reserve about a tablespoon of these herbs to put inside the couscous. It already comes with a flavoring packet, but this will just add more punch to the dish. And the rest of the herbs will be for the marinade. You put these right away in the marinade bowl. So this is probably about two tablespoons of fresh chopped herbs. If you don't have any fresh chopped herbs at your disposal, feel free to just add some dried Italian herbs. So I'm making two skewers of four shrimp per skewer. Um, you can make obviously as many as you need. So I have my little trash dish there. When I was a kid, I used to work in fish markets, so I think I'm still really good at this. I keep the tail on mainly for presentation. Kind of looks good, and this could go right inside the marinade. Bowl. Luckily, these shrimp are already what they call deveined, so the guts are taken out of them. If not, sometimes you got to run a knife through the back side of the shrimp here, and with a fork, your finger pull pull out that what they call the vein or the the guts of the shrimp. That's bringing back memories. When I was a kid and work at fish markets, we would do like boxes of these. You become an expert after a while. Shucking oysters, cooking big pots of crab. Okay, the next step, I'm gonna peel up some garlic. I have uh, three small cloves here. I like to get off that tough little area of the garlic that attaches to the, the roots. Okay, so we have our shrimp garlic, herbs tossed in there. Next up, I'll put about a tablespoon of balsamic vinegar. I'm gonna put about a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. Grind up some fresh black pepper. It's already smelling incredible. Next part, I have some kosher salt. I'll put probably about a teaspoon of kosher salt in there. And then ideally, this will marinate for two hours to as much as overnight. Um, but I would say somewhere between four is preferable, but don't get caught up on that minutia again. If you just have two hours, do it. Or if you remember to do it the day before, that's a great idea too. It's always good, to, I think, to disperse out your work. That way you're not so stressed about getting things together at the last minute. So these will marinate, and then after they're done marinating, I'll put them on skewers. So I'll put these in the fridge. Okay, the next part, I'll make the couscous. Again, just like my previous videos on polenta, I just think polenta is so easy, it's so cheap, it's good to keep around the house. If you can make oatmeal, you can make polenta. If you can make oatmeal, you can make couscous. It's just super simple, so versatile. You could do things like today, it's gonna to be kind of savory with herbs, garlic, tomato garnish, and asparagus. But sometimes you can make more of a summer style with like, sometimes I'll use uh, canned diced pears or you can put mandarin oranges in there with um, things like um, chopped up at the very end, garnish it with chopped up sliced almonds. That's really good in there. So there's so many different versatile, versatile ways. You can mix it with pesto and mix in some fresh basil. There's so many ways to make this. It just takes five minutes to cook it. And it can be served warm, which is great too. And, and it can be served at room temperature. It's still delicious. And I'm just gonna follow the directions on the back of the box with the flavoring packet they have in there. But I'm gonna add in some extra herbs that I had and then mix in some cherry tomatoes towards the end and asparagus. So once it's towards the end, because it's gonna have a lot of residual heat, I'll put in my diced asparagus. Again, a lot of this is just for garnish. 
Again, I'm just following the directions on the box, which is one and a quarter cups of water, two teaspoons of olive oil or butter, the spice packet, and that's it. It says bring it to a boil, stir in the couscous, cover, remove from heat, let stand for five minutes. It can't get any simpler than that. I will add in the fresh herbs now. I'll put in the flavoring packet. Okay, that is at a strong boil. Dump in the packet. As soon as you put it in, you can turn off the fire. Again, can't get any easier than that. You want to stir it in to make sure you mix it all up well with the seasoning packet that was in there. I did say to put in a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. And then that pan is already really hot. So these, this asparagus is fairly thin, less than a quarter inch. So just with the residual heat that's there, that'll cook in the couscous. I have these longer pieces that I reserved just have a little bit longer pieces. You could kind of use them as garnish on the dish. And I will cover that and let it sit for five minutes. It'll be done. But again, you could put this in the refrigerator, pull it out the next day and serve it. If you put it in the refrigerator, I recommend that you pull it out half hour, hour before you're going to use it because I think it's best not to be ice cold. But at room temperature, it's still delicious. This is still warm. I'm going to mix in the cherry tomatoes. Again, the main purpose of the cherry tomatoes is kind of like, you know, they taste good in there, but also garnish. I always like getting some contrasting colors in the food. Um, another option also, sun-dried tomatoes in there would be del delicious. Like couscous with garlic, fresh herbs, sun-dried tomatoes, Kalamata olives. That would be a really savory, a lot of Italian flavor in there. Then right before you serve it, you could mix it in with Parmesan cheese. My mouth's watering thinking about it. All right, these shrimp have been marinating for about two hours. I'm just gonna skewer them on the rosemary. Again, this rosemary, I'm gonna see how it works. It's, it's fairly hefty. Maybe you wanna take out the first little pieces so you have a little inch with no herbs on it there just to help poke it through. It is better to have some heftier shrimp, you know, like 1620s is a, a size of shrimp. If they don't wanna go through, like your rosemary's a little flimsy or you have smaller shrimp, you could start the process off by poking it with a, a wooden skewer just to already get a hole going in there, make it easier to, to put it through the shrimp without damaging the shrimp. And you have to be kind of gentle here because with all those herbs on it, it's actually creating a fairly big hole going through the shrimp. It's good to be ready for a plan B. So I would always buy a few extra shrimp in case one of them gets destroyed as you're skewering it in there, so that, that's it, that's that's the first one there. Our skewered shrimp on rosemary. I do find it, it is a little easier to, to start off the process by poking it first. And you want them all to be kind of in the same, it looks a little better if they're all going in the same direction with the tails on the bottom. Okay, there we go. Today I'm just making two for demonstration purposes. You can make as many as you like. So I'm gonna put these in the fridge, get the barbecue started, get it heated up. You definitely wanna put it on a hot barbecue and it'll go really quick. It'll probably just take like three minutes on each side. And it's nice and hot. All right, our shrimp are on the barbecue. Should only take about three minutes on each side. One way to tell if your barbecue is hot is to put your hand about five inches above the grill. I can't hold it there more than five seconds. That means it's hot. All right, the shrimp has been turned over. Probably just has about another minute. Again, there'll be residual heat, so you want to pull them off before they're completely done. Again, mainly you just want the shrimp to turn from translucent color to that opaque color. So thanks for joining me on Just Cook with Michael. Get out there and just cook. <laughs>